In Brussels on Thursday for NATO, EU and G7 summits, President Biden said the transatlantic alliance would respond if Russian leader Vladimir Putin does use chemical warfare. Ken Cruz from our Washington, D.C. Bureau reports. After warning that Russian President Vladimir Putin may use biological weapons in Ukraine, President Joe Biden at an emergency NATO summit declares the U.S. will take action if there is a chemical attack. We would respond. We would respond if he uses it. The nature of the response would depend on the nature of the use. There's still no specifics on whether military force is on the table. Could, if chemical weapons were used in Ukraine, would that trigger a military response from NATO? It would trigger a response in kind. Whether or not you're asking whether NATO would cross, we'd make that decision at the time. The president says the summit with leaders of NATO, the G7, and the EU is sending an unmistakable message to Putin. Putin was banking on NATO being split. My early conversation with him in December and early January it was clear to me he didn't think we could sustain this cohesion. NATO has never, never been more united than it is today. Putin is getting exactly the opposite what he intended to have as a consequence of going into Ukraine. President Biden and NATO again announced new penalties against Russia, including new ones on Russian lawmakers. We're also announcing new sanctions of more than 400 individuals and entities aligned with in alignment with the European Union. More than 300 members of the Duma, oligarchs and Russian defense companies that fuel the Russian war machine. And a billion dollars in humanitarian aid for Ukraine. And today, I'm announcing the United States is prepared to commit more than $1 billion in humanitarian assistance to help get relief to millions of Ukrainians affected by the war in Ukraine. But Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky, speaking via video in the summit, presses them to flood weapons into Ukraine. He says the West should provide all the weapons needed to prevent the deaths of Ukrainians from Russian strikes from Russian occupation. Zelensky says that Russia was using phosphorus bombs, which causes severe burns, conducting indiscriminate shelling of civilians, and could resort to full-scale use of chemical weapons. He was sharply critical to the U.S. and NATO for not doing more, saying Ukrainians are dying and says NATO has yet to show what it can do to save people, pleading for fighter jets, tanks, and a no-fly zone. Meanwhile, President Biden says he wants to see Russia thrown out of the G20 club of leading economic nations. Yes, that depends on the G20. Um, I, that, that was raised today, and uh, I raised the possibility if that can't be done, if Indonesia and others do not agree, then we should, in my view, ask to have both uh, um, Ukraine uh, be able to attend the meetings. He also says China, which, like much of Europe, still buys Russian oil and gas, so far has not given Russia more military aid. China understands that uh, its economic future is much more closely tied to the West uh, than it is to Russia. And so uh, I, uh, I, I'm hopeful that he, uh, he does not get engaged. The U.S. and its allies have unleashed significant sanctions against Russia for the invasion, but those penalties have not deterred Russian President Vladimir Putin. However, President Biden suggests that sanctions were not meant to deter the actions of Putin. And I did not say that, in fact, the sanctions would deter him. Sanctions never deter. The maintenance of sanctions, the maintenance of sanctions, the increasing the pain and the demonstration why I asked for this NATO meeting today is to be sure that after a month, we will sustain what we're doing, not just next month, the following month, but for the remainder of this entire year. That's what will stop him. Russia's isolation on the world stage has been underscored by a second non-binding UN General Assembly resolution demanding on immediate halt to the war, which has been approved by 140 countries, with 38 abstaining and five voting against. Ken Cruz, Eagle News, Washington. Back to you, Alma.